Well, Darlene Check, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. You've been in ministry for such a long time, mm -hmm. 30 years or so. How do you keep the fire and the passion for church and ministry? Oh, I mean, I think you keep your fire and passion for Jesus. You know, I mean, you've got to do that on your knees, in the Word. Um, it's something you take responsibility for. You know, it's not anyone else's responsibility. Yeah. And... Uh, yeah, I think, but I think that's the whole point. You know, this whole Christian life is about following Jesus and getting to know him at a deeper and deeper level all the time. And that's what fuels ministry, mm. you know. So I think um, it's a very presumptuous person who thinks she can be involved in ministry at any level like without being prayerful and being in the Word. I think it's just mm. a foundational thing. And because the Word is alive... It's what keeps you alive, yeah, keeps you absolutely. alive, keeps you hungry. And the music that you have been making over those years obviously inspires so many people in their worship experiences, their faith journeys. Yeah. What was it that first got you captivated by worship and a desire to, to share that with people? Well, again, like when I got saved, I, I will never actually forget walking into a church. I've been in church, you know, a lot over my lifetime, but... When I went into church, it's like I had this new set of ears on. I can't explain it, except, you know, I looked around at the congregation, and at that point, um, we were involved in a big church in Queensland, and I just heard this sound. And it was everybody, all ages, stages of life, singing one song, and I thought, this is, this is incredible. Mm -hmm. You know, and I was 15. It kind of really marked me, you know, I'd been singing full time since I was 10, being paid to sing since I was 10. And, you know, from that moment, 15, till about 25, you know, I was still toying with jingles and other albums and <laughs> da 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 da. But over those 10 years, you know, the worship of God really captivated my heart mm. in a way that nothing else did. And just over that time, I kind of became ruined for anything else but His worship. And I think I love that it gives the human experience, the human heart, a way to express the inexpressible. And then because God draws near to us when we come near to Him, you know, the fullness of the presence of God being near to, I mean, how could you not <laughs> how could you not want that? You know? So yeah. I I'm still like in many ways, I'm still exactly the same. Mm, yeah. I'm exactly the same when it comes to the worship of God. I get very um, protective of it. I get very passionate about it. I can't help myself. I mm. just think it's just the most beautiful gift from God to his church. What was different earth. about the music that you heard in that environment and the unity of people singing to what you heard when you were 10 and what you were singing there and in those other kind of musical environments? Oh, it just never, you know, I could s sing advertising, you know, you're singing about... <laughs> I'd love to see you do yeah, that. That would yeah, be amazing. Yeah, yeah. McDonald ads singing about French fries. Even though I loved it, and I actually love the art of music. Music is a hobby of mine. Right. Like, I love music. But when you see music doing its highest purpose, you know, helping to communicate the prayers and the language of the saints, I mean, it's just phenomenal. Yeah. And so, yeah, pretty much, even though I still love music and I love a good Coldplay concert, you know, there's one on, I'll be there. Of course. Um, but even that, you know, I can hear threads of the glory of God in that when, mm. when they're playing. And I'm like, mm, okay, God, you know, you're amazing. He's, he's yeah. the creator of it all, right? Yeah, it just switches you on. And I was actually watching an old video of Your Love is Beautiful from, I think that's the 90s. Your Love is Beautiful. Early Hillsong track. And How's it had it the drums and the cowbells. Your love is beautiful. Don't make Come it easy. Come on, girl. <laughs> oh, okay. That I remember. One. With the so trench many songs. Oh, yeah. All that. It was so fun. Mm -hmm. When you look back on that time particularly of yeah. bringing fun into yeah, the church yeah, yeah. and that kind of environment on stage, what yeah. do you cherish about it? Look, I just love... There we weren't trying to set out to prove any point. There was just a lot of freedom happening. We were all being unlocked. Yeah. And there was no pressure to perform. That's why I kind of don't call it a stage, I call it a platform. The stage kind of says, oh, we're going to go and perform, you know, but right. actually it's just a platform. 
just lifts us up so people at the back can see. Right. Like it's really no more <laughs> spiritual than that. But yeah, there was just this beautiful season of joy and being made free. And so mm. I'm like, let's go. Yeah. We're very genuine, very pure. And uh, I love that. Yeah. I just, you know, I, I'm still reaping the benefits of those days in my own soul. Mm. And many people around the world are. Like that was the mm. beauty of part of the music that you wrote then and even now. And obviously as a mum and a grandma as well, how do you share that passion for Jesus and passion for the church with your children? How do you cultivate it in their lives? I think, you know, parenting. I remember hearing a guy speak on parenting and he said there's three things. Example, example, example. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. And I'm, I've got to live it. That's how I can pass it on to my children. Yeah. You know, I've got to live it. I've got to, I've got to be the same behind the scenes as in front of the scenes. Um, you know, our children learn from watching. And, you know, I'm, I don't get it right all the time. My children have been very gracious to their mother. I think sometimes it says train up a child and I look sometimes at my kids and I'm like, you've trained up your mother. <laughs> you know, they're, yeah. they're just amazing. And I, but I think that's how we do it. I think, you know, how we live at home, that's, that's what's going to speak to our children, not how we live in a public space. Mm. Yeah. yeah, and you have the opportunity in that environment, I think, when it's multi-generational, to learn from the people in, in your family that are younger than you, of course, but yeah. also in a church context too. Yeah. What have you learned from the next generation? What do you admire about them? Oh my gosh, so much. Um, in fact, I was just saying to someone, we were at a wedding on Monday for one of our youth pastors, and I was looking at the great bunch of people around them you know and they're all in their kind of late 20s and it's like these guys what they have is they're not afraid to ask questions well, mm. why do you do that like that yeah um what why why church why is this important doesn't feel important anymore why and you're like oh oh okay you know but when i grew up we could never ask those questions you mm. might have thought them but they were just kind of taboo. Well, I love this generation who are inquisitive, yeah. intelligent, and actually anointed and empowered with something very fresh and new for this next season. So, you know, I'm a bit of an observer of people. I like listening, yeah. I like learning. So I'm quite tuned in to these guys. You know, I have children who are all in that age group and I'm listening and trying to see life through their eyes because it is a different world that they're growing up in than when yeah. I when I grew up so they've got a lot to teach us what do you say to the person who asks why church and why all of these things that in some in some context yeah. they just looked at as old tradition yeah what do you say to that person yeah I think you've got to go back to the word you've got to go back to the acts to church I think you know in Ephesians it says the church is Christ's body in which he speaks and acts and fills everything with his presence. I'm like, why church? There it is, <laughs> Ephesians 1. You just go right there. I think the questions are good because they challenge us as to, is this a healthy model mm. of church that represents what God's heart was for church on the earth? You know, and I think when we, if we get into a um, space where it's just everything happening on a platform and the the congregation becomes spectators, that's not church. Right. That's that's not church at all. Church is family. It's a body. It's um. It's meant to be a living, breathing organism of Christ's felt presence on the earth. Yeah. So the challenge, I think, to all leaders today is, is that right in your context? And what a big challenge. Is that happening in your context? I know for Mark and I, we're continually asking ourselves that question and we're continually having to morph because we've grown up a certain way, train up a child and they won't depart from it. And you've got to kind of slap yourself sometimes and go, why are we doing that like that? Mm. Is this having any effect? Is this Christ's model? Mm. for the earth today yeah were we trained up in a useful way in the right, right way right for this time in this season and so I think that's a really healthy question yeah and you mentioned as well that the generation the context that today's young people are growing up in it is different there's so many different challenges mm -hmm. to all the people that have gone before us yeah. for parents raising children 
teenagers, whatever age they might be, what's your advice for how they can raise strong, godly, confident yeah. kids? Yeah. yeah, I think it's a big question. You know, for my kids, I am so thankful for youth. Even when they kicked and screamed, I was the mother that said, you're going, right? Not always easy. Mm. And I think, you know, the parenting is almost relaxed so much that it's like, well, if you don't want to, you don't have to. I think sometimes we've got to go, actually, you're 15 mm. and I'm your mother and you are going. You know, while I am driving you places, and <laughs> because there are, you know, at 13, 14, 15, you don't know. You don't know what you need yet. Mm. You're developing emotionally, spiritually, physically, mentally. You know, so we've got to, we've got to kind of take our stance as parents, and then, as I said, living it behind closed doors, and then making sure that where we're asking them to participate in that it is a healthy representation of church on the earth. Mm. Because our kids know, you know. The thing is today, you know, I think Christianity actually in our country is being quite embraced. The problem is, so are all religions. So, oh, if it's good for you, oh, whatever's good for you. And it's like, so the church on the earth, we have to be places of power, of transformation, because mm. that's the difference, his presence. Yeah. You know, we're not like everything else. And so make sure if, you, if you're insisting your children be part of something, make sure it's the thing that sets that thing apart is the presence of God, because your kids will get addicted to it. Yeah, it creates a very holistic picture. And people who've watched your life will have seen you walk through many different seasons yeah. as a worship leader, a yeah. pastor, a mum, having yeah. been a cancer patient, all yeah. those things. Yeah. How do you keep a sense of hope and I think grace in the way that you've handled all of those different transitions? How do you do that? How do you hold that attitude? Just this is the grace of God, the mercy of God, you know, because there are times that I don't have that attitude, it's just I'm not having it while I'm sitting here talking to you. <laughs> yep. I'm putting on my, you know, and but it's a choice. You know, we have a choice all the time. We have a choice whether we're going to show up or whether we're going to sit down and just bury ourselves in our own misery. Yeah. You know, I have that same choice and I'm just choosing not to live like that. So... We have hard days, we have family struggles, we have th just like everybody else, yeah. you know, but I'm making a choice because, you know, my life matters. And so your life matters. So, so we, have a, we have a choice. You can affect people. Well, we do affect people by how we live in this world. Mm. And you can affect them one way or the other. Right. So I want to affect them for, for Christ. I want to affect them upwards, yeah. not out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so when you're going through a season that feels tough personally mm -hmm. or as a family, even as a church, mm -hmm. how do you pull yourself out of that time? Because it can be, be very simple to say it just through Jesus, which mm -hmm. is true, but practically mm -hmm. what does that look like for you? I'm pretty good at walking and praying. You know, I'm not, I've learned to hold my tongue. You know, probably when I was younger, I would have rung a couple of girlfriends and, ah! You know, <laughs> yeah, um, cut it out. Yeah, yeah. But I, you know, I'm I'm really blessed now that my children are really close friends. You know, it's beautiful, and my husband. Um, I walk and pray, and I I really do. I when there's something that's really like turmoil in my heart, um, I just get out the door and I pray. I walk on the beach. We're blessed to the central coast and. I just pray until I feel there's some sort of release in myself um, because I'm a soft person so I and I pick up atmospheres in rooms and so that's a good thing but it's also I can tend to take it all on board and mm. you know want to make sure everyone's okay and and that can actually become quite a weight so walk and pray is my thing yeah. that's what I do and you know think this way you need to exercise you need to get out you need to kind of get your mind off the thing and keep disciplining yourself to keep bringing it to God I can see why the Bible says cast your cares because you've got to you've got to it's active you've got to cast them it's not just like oh, Jesus has got it 
no, no, you've actually got to like physically almost throw your cares mm. on him because we're pretty good at holding them ourselves, I think. Yeah, and it forces you to open out again and particularly as senior pastors to say that you, you know, take it all on board and you can take it all on yeah. board. That's a big responsibility. Yeah. How have you as a, as a senior pastor preserved your kind of personal identity as well as being that of a leader and somebody that does carry a large body of people? I'm just me. <laughs> I literally, I'll, I'll do my best in whatever situation, you know, and, and in the end I'm not people's saviour. You know, my job is to point people to Christ and that really protects me. The other thing, we're really blessed, the founding pastors of our church, when I'm having a really bad day, I'll go and have a cup of tea. <laughs> we'll sit on their veranda and they're like, just talk to us, Oh, stars. I love that. I know, it's, <laughs> it's a blessing. Uh, I think it's always good to have people in the corner who you can be real with. And, mm. Do you know in our church too, you know, we say to our church, this isn't a church for perfect people. I also say to them, if you want to be really thin, this is not the church for you either because we love to eat. <laughs> Too many group family we have, dinners? Totally, totally. We are a table church. We're not a event church. Right. We do a lot around tables. I just think that we've got to have people that we can be very real with. And, and, I, and why I said that is, you know, I think our congregation, and we, we say, come as you are. If you're expecting a perfect church, you need to go somewhere else because that's not us. And we're going to be quite real with people. We don't tell them everything, you know, if we're going through hard things, but we don't pretend mm. that life is like Disneyland every day. Yeah. Because it's not. Mm, it's not real. real. Yeah, it's not real. And, and seeing someone like yourself be real about all of those things as you have been today too, we really appreciate it, darling. Oh, you're so welcome. I've so enjoyed chatting with you. Thank you so much. You're welcome.